the disciples were gathered in an upper room behind closed and locked doors for fear of the Jews. Some of them doubted the account of the women about Jesus' resurrection. Peter and another disciple ran out to the tomb to see for themselves. But they were still confused and doubtful. It was natural for them to fear for their own lives after the Jewish leaders had just condemned and, and crucified Jesus. They assumed that they would be the next to be executed. They had not understood the Old Testament prophecies concerning the suffering, death, and resurrection of the Messiah, so they were in a rather sad and hopeless state at this point. They gathered together for mutual support, but behind locked doors, so that they could not easily be arrested. They found the testimony of the women troubling, but unbelievable. They did not recall the words of Jesus that he must suffer and be put to death and the third day rise again. Although he had plainly told them this many times, in fact on one occasion after he had, he had said this, Peter rebuked him and said, no Lord, this, this isn't the way it's supposed to be. You can't, you can't go to Jerusalem to die. And Jesus turned and sharply rebuked Peter. But somehow, in the short time intervening between then and, and now, in the dark upper room, he had forgotten about that. He was still confused because this just didn't match what they had been taught that the coming of the Messiah would mean. They were looking for a, a worldly king who was going to take over the Jewish nation and free them from the oppression of the Romans, make their nation great again, make it powerful among the nations of the world. They were confused. They were doubtful. They were fearful. It's easy for us to sit back at the point where we are now and, and be critical of, of the disciples for their lack of faith. But after all, we have the benefit of the New Testament scriptures, which show the proper interpretation of the Old Testament messianic promises. We have the, we have the promises of Jesus plainly before us in, in scripture about his suffering and death and also about his resurrection, and about his assuming his place at God's right hand and interceding for his people before God. But still, aren't we sometimes a little fearful? Do we have the courage to witness to people around us, that we are Christians, that we believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior, that we know that though we are sinful, our sins are forgiven for his sake. Are we really as bold to speak the gospel as God would have us be? You know, the people who live next door to you or in your neighborhood know that you're a Christian? Or do you keep that behind closed doors? Do you share your faith with your fellow co-workers if you have jobs outside the home? Or are you afraid that you'll be looked down on as being superstitious or not very realistic, not grounded? We fear what people think of us. And it's our nature. God knows that. 
and God died for that. But he also died so that we might have a spirit of boldness to proclaim his name to those around us who may not know him, who may never have heard of Jesus, who may not have even an inkling that he is their savior and he died for their sins and wants to take them to heaven to be with him eternally. Peter says in his first epistle that we are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a chosen people whose purpose is to proclaim the excellencies of God who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Do we witness this in our lives? In our attitudes toward others? In the way we treat others? In the way that we talk to people? Do the people we come in contact with on a casual basis have any reason to suspect that we are Christians? Or are we closed off? for fear of being ridiculed or rejected. What about within our own families? We are a royal priesthood. The purpose of the priesthood is to share God's love with those around them. Do we share God's love daily with our own families, with our spouses, with our children, children with our brothers and sisters, or our parents? Do we, tell, do we tell the people nearest to us that we love them and that Jesus loved them? Do we bring our children up knowing what the Lord has in store for them so that they need not fear anything you know, one of the big problems in, in schools today is, is bullying. Sadly, the, the people who are most prone to being bullied are those who don't know what a, what a blessing they have in Jesus Christ. Who don't know the love that God has for them and that he has called them his children, and nothing can take them out of his hand. If our, if our children learn at home that they are loved, that God loves them, that God has promised them eternity, he has promised to save them from their sins, to save them from all the tricks and deceits of the devil, all the attacks of the world, then our children might be less prone to being bullied if they know that God loves them. What does it matter if some bully despises them? Do we witness God's love to our children in ways that our children know that regardless of what they do, even though we may not agree or appreciate what they have done, even though they may have defied our authority, that we will still love them. The greatest fear of a child is being rejected. Because for a child, rejection is equated with death. If we have devotions in our families on a daily basis, if we talk about the love of God, about the gospel of Jesus Christ, talk about how we love them and the God loves them even more. 
then perhaps they will grow up with a strength, an inner strength, that can cause them to be not afraid to stand up when they are called out and bullied. Also, if they know that they have the parents' unconditional love, they may be more willing to talk to us about the problems that they have with others, in school, on the playground, wherever, without fear of, of recrimination. If we tell our children how much God loves them and how much we love them, perhaps they will be more willing to share their inner turmoils with us if they don't think that they're going to be judged for asking questions. God wants us to show his love, to be a beacon of his love to the world. He calls us royal priesthood. This means that he wants us to talk to people about his love, to share his love, to share the promises that he has made to us, and to assure them of our love in Jesus. If we don't witness any difference that Jesus makes in our lives, how is anyone outside of our home or our church going to know that we are Christians? And how will anyone ever, how will we ever plant a seed in anyone's life if we're afraid to talk about Jesus? We all have this problem. I'm not immune. <laughs> and um, good news is Jesus forgives us, promises to be with us, has sent the Holy Spirit who calls us by his gospel, enlightens us with his gifts, sanctifies and keeps us in the true faith with Jesus Christ, as Martin Luther wrote in his catechism. We need to lean on that strength, that power, daily, in witnessing and in prayer. The more we pray to God, the closer we will draw to him and the more strength we will get from him. He has promised to always hear the prayers of those who are his children. Jesus told his disciples, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. We can't do it on our own. We need God's help. We need the help of his spirit. That's why we need to pray frequently for that help. We need to be studying his word and be in his word so that we know what he wants us to do. So that we receive strength from that word to do what he wants. May God grant this to us all, for Jesus' sake. Amen.